I've been traveling this summer through some European countries, only bringing my OM-1, the 17mm 1.2 uh, Olympus lens, and the 42-150mm lens. And uh, yeah, I've been to Germany, Slovenia, Austria, Italy, and Croatia in my camper van. So I've been photographing uh, all around these countries. Uh, I'm going to share my findings with you and how I like this uh, setup for traveling. One of the big advantages of this camera is, of course, the size and weight. It's easy to, to travel with and, and bring along. It doesn't weigh too much, it doesn't take up too much space in your backpack, so highly recommended for, for hiking and, and stuff like that. Also, the on one's uh, photo or image quality is amazing. Uh, I'm really surprised when switching to, to this system how good it actually is. Of course, it has uh, limitations on, on this sensor size, but uh, I'm more than pleased with the results. So. What I'm going to show you now is a lot of photos, a little video, uh, and all, the, all is handheld in, in this series, so bear that in mind. Um, let's get started and look at some photos while I'm talking uh, through all these uh, photos. The first photo are of the Würzburg residence in Germany. I planned a day here in Würzburg to see the town, but the weather was terrible, so I didn't stay here for long. This photo was taken with the Olympus 17mm f1.2 wide open. As you can see, it's super sharp and detailed. Here you see the river stream from the Savica waterfall in Slovenia. Again, I'm using the 17mm lens handheld, and this time I'm using the live ND mode built into the OM-1 camera. This enables you to do long exposures wide open in bright conditions like here. And the result are this smooth and silky look of the running stream. I also did some 4K 60 handheld video, and I think this system does a good job capturing video. This is what it looks like slowed down to 40% in post. I do miss the 120 FPS I had in my former system, but 60 FPS is absolutely usable. And who knows what comes next from OM system. This is Bohinj Valley in Slovenia and the light is a little harsh as it's near midday. I'm using the 17mm at f1.4 to capture this beautiful scenery. The OM-1 with the 17mm attached is a really lightweight setup to take on a hike like this. And it delivers really great results. My AF settings when taking photos like this are SAF with a center spot. Usually I take multiple photos with my focus at different distances and decide in post which I like the best. I have now reached Postojna Cave in Slovenia. Here the OM-1 really gets challenged. This photo was taken at ISO 4000 with the 17mm f1.2 wide open. There are noise, but it's absolutely acceptable. And with the noise removal tools you can use today in post, situations like this are no problem for the OM-1. This location is highly recommended to visit. The caves are enormous, as you can see in this photo, with the two people standing on the bridge in the lower right corner. Here I really are at the limit of acceptable noise. Here with a little noise reduction. The photo are cropped from vertical to 16x9 to fit this video in 4K. That of course bring out the noise more. This is the uncropped version with no noise reduction added. Uncropped, it's usable even at ISO 8000 really impressive from a MFT sensor. The next location I put the OM-1 to work are at the amazing Projama Castle, also located in Slovenia. No problem for the 17mm to make some amazing wide-angle photos. Closer framed photos are also possible at this location with this setup. This is the torture chamber of the Projama Castle. It is very dark down here and this photo are taken at ISO 20,000. Actually not as bad as I expected and a usable photo for documentation. I have now arrived in Croatia in my camper van and visit the town Pula to see and photograph the Roman amphitheater Pula Arena. I photograph only sections of the arena to leave out modern things in the background. And for this I used both the 17mm and the 40-150mm lens. I also did a few shots in the streets of Pula with the 17mm lens. And you can see it's super sharp and with good contrast and details. This location are the Euphrasian Basilica in Porek, Croatia. 
The space is very narrow here, but the Olympus 17mm was still wide enough to get some beautiful photos of the architecture and also the details inside. Here the ISO are at 6400 and there are still good details, despite the noise levels are quite visible here. In this photo I have switched to the Olympus 40-150mm f2.8 to get some details of the beautiful artwork in the ceilings of the church. Now I am in the area with the Italian Dolomites. Here the 40-150mm I used to zoom in on the holes in the clouds where the peaks of the Dolomites can be seen. It's really useful with the zoom lens in these conditions. This landscape series of 6 photos are all taken with the 40-150mm lens on the M1. I am more than pleased with the results from this gear, and it's highly recommended for travel photography. The only time on my trip I needed a wider aperture was here at Lago di Carrazza in Italy. I couldn't get the whole scene and reflection in the frame, because it was not possible to move further away from the scene. I solved it by shooting handheld vertically at 25 frames per second, while panning the scene and pick out every 10 photo and stitch them together to panorama in post. This gave me a wider shot, plus I could get the reflection in the water in the frame too. I shot it in CAF with a center focus point, and aimed at the tree line for a consistent focus distance. Manual focus or SAF could also have been options in this situation. This I photographed with the 17mm lens. And here I switched to the 40-150mm to lens to get closer to the mountains and get some details of the peaks. This gear can capture some amazing details for sure. This is my base camp for trips like this, and I love the freedom of this way of traveling. And so does my girlfriend Gide when she joins my adventures from time to time. So my thoughts on this gear after I return from this uh, trip is it's perfect for traveling. I really enjoyed the shooting with it and I really like the, the quality of the, the photos, also the video. Um, it's not on par with the, my old system. I had the Sony A1 before and the video on that looked fantastic. Uh, really sharp and crispy. Uh, it also looks really good on this system, but I can see the difference. But uh, for what the, I used it for on this trip, it was perfect. And also this is really easy to handhold with the, the inbuilt uh, image stabilization, also on video. So actually that's a, a big plus for this system. It's easy to bring along, it's easy to use uh, on, on travels, hiking uh, in cities, sightseeing and stuff like that. So it's a highly recommended system for me. I, I love uh, shooting with it, so I'm really happy. The only thing I maybe could have used was a little uh, wider lens too on this trip. I also have a 12 to 24 millimeter f2.8 lens I, I left behind. That could maybe have been good, um, as I showed you in the, in the photos uh, and, and video here, of the Lago de Carreza. I, I had some problems getting far enough uh, away from the scene to, to get it all in the, in the frame, so I had to find a solution, as I showed you. But maybe the, the, uh, the 12 mm lens could have uh, done the trick here. So I will remember that for the next time uh, to bring that too. So that, will, that means I have to, uh, three lenses with me on, uh, on trips like this in the future. But uh, as I said, highly recommended, super quality, as you, as you saw in the photos here, so yeah, I'm happy. That's all I had to show you in this episode. Uh, I just wanted to share my, my thoughts on, on using this for traveling, so I hope it was useful. Please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Stay safe. Bye.